We have a pretty solid navigation infrastructure in our application. We can click between pages, but our navigation is still kind of lame to be honest because clicking through these pages is kind of a pain. What if I'm on the home page and I want to go straight to the account page? What we need is a navigation bar. That's pretty common for applications. And I'm going to start off by creating a navigation bar view model. So let's create that, just a new class, the navigation bar view model. And this will inherit from our view model base, as all view models do. And what is the navigation bar going to do? Well, it's going to have buttons on it so that we can navigate to different views. And those buttons are going to have to have bindings to commands. So we're going to have multiple commands on here. We'll start off with just a command to navigate home. So we'll have this the navigate home command. So our navigation bar is going to have a button, maybe titled home, that will take us to the home page. We also want to go to the account page. So we'll have a navigate account command and a navigate login command. And these commands are going to be pretty simple. So we can instantiate those with our navigate command that we used in previous videos. So we'll instantiate a new navigate command, make sure we import that. And that takes a navigation service for the view model we want to go to. And that navigation service is going to come through our constructor. So let's just call this the home navigation service. And actually this navigate command needs to be a generic for the view model we want to go to. So the TV model needs to be a home view model because that's the view model we're trying to navigate to. And this home navigation service is going to come through the constructor. So let's generate a parameter there. And let me just import this namespace. That's a good start. So let's continue with the other commands. I'll just duplicate these lines and we'll set the navigate account command to a new navigate command, this time to the account view model. And we'll need an account navigation service. And last but not least, we have the navigate login command is going to navigate us to the login view model. And this will have to be a login navigation service. And same thing as the home navigation service, these will come through the constructors. Let's generate parameters for those. And that's really all we want our navigation bar view model to do. It's just going to navigate for us. So now our home view model is going to have a navigation bar. So it's also going to need a navigation bar view model. So let's get a property for that. This will be the navigation bar view model and we'll call it just that the navigation bar view model. And this navigation bar view model is going to come through the constructor. So let's get a parameter for the navigation bar view model and set that property. And I'm also going to have a navigation bar view model on my account view. So my account view model will need that view model property as well. Let's just generate a property for the navigation bar view model. There we go. So only the home and account pages are going to have a navigation bar. I'll leave the login view model out of this just to show that not every view needs a navigation bar. And we do have a bit of duplication here because our home view model and our account view model have the navigation bar view model. So they're also going to have to represent that in the view. So in the future, we're going to take a look at layouts and layout view models to show off how we can remove this duplication. And it might also feel strange that the account view model needs to know about a navigation bar view model. It should really only care about accounts. But we'll cover that in a future tutorial. But now if we look at our app.xaml, we see we instantiate our home view model, but our home view model now takes a navigation bar view model. So we're going to need one of those view models. Let's just create that here. So the navigation bar view model will instantiate that. And that needs a home navigation service, an account navigation service, and a login navigation service. So before this gets crazy and we end up instantiating a ton of stuff right here in the startup, I'm going to move these instantiations into methods. So we'll have a method to create a home navigation service. And we will just generate that. And we'll start off with just the home navigation service. So this needs to return a new navigation service for a home view model. And that needs a navigation store and a function to create a home view model. So the navigation store, we have that right here. We instantiate it. So we could pass this into this method to create a home navigation service. But I'm going to simplify this a little so we don't have to pass in a bunch of stuff for all these methods. And I'm going to move these to fields. So we will have an account store field. And again, this will represent the single account store that we're using all throughout the application. 
and same with the navigation store. And I'm also going to move these instantiations into the constructor as they need to be because I made these read only. And we also need to update to use these new fields that we have. So we'll put a little underscore in front of these because that is what we named the fields. And now we have so many syntax errors everywhere, but we're going to get this going. We have our navigation service we're trying to instantiate, but now we can pass in our navigation store field and a function to create a home view model. So this function takes no parameters because it is just a func and will return the home view model. And this home view model needs a navigation bar view model. So this navigation bar view model, we should put this in a field as well. Let's do that. So just generate a field and I'll actually make this read only as well and move this instantiation into the constructor. So now when this func gets called and we instantiate the home view model, we can use our navigation bar view model field. We have our account store in a field and we have our navigation store in a field as well. This is getting very long. Let's move these to new lines. So good progress. We have our home navigation service. We can create that. And we also want to create an account navigation service and a login navigation service. So let's continue spreading this out. And we're going to have two more methods. The second one will be create account navigation service. And the third one will be create login navigation service. Let's generate these. And this is the same situation I mentioned earlier in previous videos where this is kind of a pain because we're not using dependency injection. So it would be easier if we were using that, but we'll do it the explicit way at first just to get a gist of how this all works. So in this method, we're gonna have to create a login navigation service. So let's just copy this and change it to what we want. So we want a navigation service for the login view model, and that needs a func to create a login view model. And this login view model, we're not having a navigation bar on there, so we just pass in the account store and the navigation store. And finally, creating an account navigation service. Just instantiate a navigation service for an account view model. Our callback function needs to create a new account view model. And this one needs the navigation bar view model. Okay, so we're pretty much done creating these navigation services. And the last error we have is that we have to pass a navigation bar view model to this home view model that we instantiate here. But let's think about what this is doing. This is navigating for us so we could just use our navigation service to do this navigation here so let's do that let's create a home navigation service because that's what we're trying to navigate to and we'll put that into a variable and now that we have that we can take our navigation service and simply navigate so now all of that home view model stuff is just tucked away in the home navigation service so we don't have to do it again when we want to navigate on startup we can just use the home navigation service. Now this is all fine and dandy on the view model level, but we're creating a navigation bar and I haven't done anything in the UI yet. So let's get an actual navigation bar on the UI. So to do that, let's actually create a new folder. This is going to be for components. I'm not putting this in my views folder because it's not necessarily a view. I consider my views to be the entire page and a view is made up of tiny UI components. And one of those tiny UI components is going to be our navigation bar. So this is going to be a user control navigation bar. And I'll probably end up live debugging this so we can see our changes as we do it. But let's just get some basic stuff going in here. So our navigation bar is going to have a bunch of columns. We'll start off with just maybe four. So in this first column, I want to have the title of my application. This is just the navigation demo and that's going to be grid column zero and again probably just going to have to adjust all this with margins and stuff when we get into live debugging but after the title we're going to have all of our buttons to navigate to different views so our first button is going to be grid column one so right after the title and this is going to navigate us to the home view so we'll title this home and it's also going to bind to our navigate home commands on our navigation bar view model. And then we're simply just going to have two more of these, except one is going to go to the login page, one is going to go to the account page, and let's update these commands as well. So the navigate account command and the navigate login command. And let me fix these columns. And that should be good enough to test this, but of course we have to get our navigation bar onto our views. So our home view is going to have a navigation bar, and so is our account view. So I don't want the navigation bar in the same grid with all my actual page content. I want to put it in a different grid, so I'm just going to surround this with a grid. And then this higher up grid is going to have two rows in it. The first row will be auto, and the second row is going to have all the page content. So it's going to have star and fill the entire size of the page. 
And again, our actual home content is going to go in that row. So this grid will be grid row 1. And right before that, in grid row 0, we're going to have our navigation bar. So let's import that component's namespace. This is grid row 0. And let's think about this. The data context for our home view is the home view model. So that means by default, the data context for our navigation bar that is on the home view is also going to be the home view model, but we don't want that because we're trying to access these bindings and these properties on the navigation bar view model. So we want our data context of the navigation bar to be a navigation bar view model. But that's no big deal because our home view model has a navigation bar view model. So let's set the data context of our navigation bar to the navigation bar view model that is on the home view model. And before we go any further, let's do the same thing with the account view. So I'm going to copy this top section, move into the account view, and drop all that at the top. And we need another grid down here at the bottom. And we also need to import our components namespace that contains the navigation bar. All right, I'm pretty pumped. I'm thinking this is going to work. Let's see this in action. Whoops, and we must have missed some constructor updates. Let's see what these errors are. And that is when we instantiate our navigate home command on our account view model, we pass in a navigation service. And this navigation service navigates to the home view model. So we have a callback to create a home view model on here. But we added a navigation bar view model to the home view model. So this is going to have to be updated. But we instantiate a home view model navigation service right here. Why not just pass one in? And passing one in is going to be super easy because in our app.xaml.cs, we have this function to create the navigation service that we want. So let's go ahead and do that. So just delete all of this. And we're going to get a home navigation service as a parameter to this constructor. So generate that. And we actually no longer need the navigation store in here. So we can remove that. Still need the account store because we use the account on this account view model. But anyways, I think we need to do the same thing on the login view model. So this account navigation service that we create right here, we should just get that through the constructor as well. So generate that parameter, no longer need the navigation store here. And now we actually have to pass these in and that's all done in the app.xaml.cs, which means it's gonna be super easy because we have functions to create those navigation services. So we can create an account navigation service here, pass that in. And we can create, I believe this one is a home navigation service and pass that in. Whoops, and my home view model needs that as well. So it needs a login navigation service. Get that through the constructor. And here we no longer even need the account store and navigation store, so just remove those. There we go, now we take less parameters, that's always good. So in our app.xaml.cs, update our home view model instantiation to take the creation of a login navigation service. And now, everything should work. All right, so here is our navigation bar, kind of ugly, but let's click account. There we go, we go to the account page and my grid rows must be messed up. Let me go to the account view. And that is because this grid with our account content needs to be row one. There we go, that's better. And we can go to login. And on this page, we don't have a navigation bar, but all the other pages do. And let's make this navigation bar look better. So I wanna give it a max width of a thousand, just that it lines up with all of our actual page content. So let's do that, max width a thousand. Let's also give it some margin. So we'll start off with 20, maybe a little bit less on the top. That looks good. And I also did 20 margin left and right just to match this margin on our content. Let's give it a background too. So we'll do, all right, I like this Indian red. That looks nice, which means I also want my foreground to be white on this title, so that stands out better. We'll also make it bigger, so maybe 14. That looks good, and let's spread out these buttons. So actually, let's move these buttons to the right over here. How would we do that? Well, quite simply, all we have to do is change this column definition for our title to be star, so that it fills up all the space, and then all the buttons just fill up as much space as they need, so everything gets pushed all the way over there, because this title column takes up all of that space and now let's spread out these buttons let's give them some margin so we'll just do 10 on the right for every single button that looks good let's actually style these buttons so to do that we'll have some resources and define a style targeting all the buttons which means we're not going to give it a key and it's automatically going to be applied and let's set the background property to be transparent so we don't have that 
kind of default gray background. And we also want to set the border thickness to zero because we had a border, but now we got none. And now I also want to set the foreground to white so that stands out. So foreground, there we go, white. Looks better already. Now I want to get rid of this highlight whenever we hover over it. And the easiest way to do that is actually just to define a new template. So that's okay in our case because our buttons are going to be pretty simple. They're just going to show text. So for this template, let's open this up with a bunch of XAML. Let's have a value in here. And this is going to have to be a control template for a button. And this can just have a text block with the text having a template binding to the content that we have on our button. And in that case, that's just this text for home, login, and account. So there we go. Now when we hover, we get nothing. But I would like to have some kind of effect when we hover, so maybe an underline would look good. And that can be done with triggers. So we're going to have a trigger based on the is mouse over property, so when we're actually hovering. And if that is true, I want to underline this. And the easiest way to do that is in the control template. So I'm going to copy this setter for our template and change this text block so it has a text decoration of underline. So here we go, mouse over. There we go, we get the underline. Now I also want the cursor to change, and we can do that with another setter on the cursor property. And I think hand is a good one for a pointer. And there we go, that looks nice. So maybe the last thing we want to do is hide the account button if we haven't logged in yet. So maybe on this account button on our navigation bar, we can set the visibility to a binding based on if we are logged in, so an is logged in property. And we'll have to use a converter here. So let's get that converter, and that's going to be a Boolean to visibility converter, which is built into WPF for us. We give that a key, we'll just call it Boolean to visibility converter, and that is the static resource we're going to point to in this converter. But now, of course, we need an is logged in property, so let's get that on our navigation bar view model. And how do we know if we're logged in or not? Well, that's going to be on our account store. So in our case, if the current account is null, that means we are not logged in. So let's actually put our is logged in property on here so that we can capture that logic. So we are logged in if current account does not equal null. And if all this is in the account store, that means our navigation bar view model is going to need an account store. So let's get that into a field. Make sure we import that as well. And to get an is logged in property on our navigation bar view model, which is needed for this is logged in property that we try to bind to, all we have to do is define that property is logged in and get that from the account store. And last but not least, we need an account store passed into this navigation bar view model. So let's update that in our app.xaml. Just pass in the account store. So now we are not logged in. Let's go ahead and log in. Here we go. And there we go. Now we have the account tab popping up because we are logged in. So that might be a common requirement for a navigation bar. So I definitely just wanted to show that off. Anyways, that is all we have to do to set up a navigation bar. So we started off with just a simple navigation bar view model for all the commands to handle our navigation. Then we passed that view model to all the view models that we wanted to have a navigation bar. So the home view model has the navigation bar view model and the account view model has it as well. And then we updated our views to have a navigation bar and the data context for those is our navigation bar view model and then we implemented that navigation bar with just a bunch of buttons that we can click to simply navigate via the commands on our navigation bar view model and we did a custom style for these navigation buttons as well which looks kind of nice we also had to do a bunch of stuff in our app.xaml.cs to create our navigation services which was kind of a pain but would be easier with dependency injection which we'll look into later. Anyways, hopefully this is helpful for your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.